right, so then we we'll move into the rotator cuff. So we start with the supraspinatus. That's going to come off of the supraspinatus fossa. Okay? And that's going to insert into the greater tuberosity. So that's going to come through this subacromial space and go right in into, onto the greater tuberosity. Yeah, so it's here, and then it's going underneath the chromium to the greater tuberosity. So like I said, again, it's going to stabilize that glenohumeral joint and assist a little bit in the abduction. Then you have the teres minor. Actually, I'll skip the one. Okay, so that's going to be here. And that's going to be uh, from the infraspinous fossa. And then that's going to be going on to also the greater tuberosity. So the greater tuberosity, remember, is more lateral than the lesser tuberosity. Okay. Then you have the teres minor. And that's going to be on the inferior lateral border of the scapula down here. And then again, that's going to go up to the greater tuberosity. So it's going to do some external rotation. And then the subscapularis is going to be around on the front. front part of the scapula, and that's going to assist with internal rotation. So we're just going to a couple muscles we'll go over, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back and move all the tables out and do palpation stuff. So we have Terry's major which is going to come down on the lower part of the scapula. And that comes around to the front part of the humerus. That's why it does internal rotation. Okay. So that's going on to the intertubricular groove. So that's going to be this kind of motion. Okay. We'll try to be able to find that with the palpation. That's going to be part of the posterior part of the axillary fold. The anterior part was the pec major. Posterior is going to be the lat and part of the teres major. And then corcobrachialis, the origins on the corcobrach process, and then it goes to the mid part of the humerus. And then it's going to do some flexion, adduction of the arm, and it's going to help out with the pec major. All right, then we have the muscles that cross the shoulder and the elbow which is going to be the biceps brachii. And that has, because of the name, biceps meaning it has two heads. Okay. The long head is going to come up through this bicipital groove in between the grander and lesser tuberosities to the upper part of the glenohumeral joint, or fossa, the upper part of it. And then the short head is going to come off of the carpet process. So those two heads come up here, and then they insert onto the radius at the radial tuberosity. So they're going to flex the elbow and flex the shoulder, then they're also going to supinate. So they insert onto the head of the radius, and they're going to pull it up like that. Okay. So it's going here, it's going to supinate. Then what's the muscle on the back side of the arm? Um, tricep. Yeah. So that's going to have three heads and it's crossing the elbow and the shoulder joint. 
and we'll get more into those again when we talk about actual the actual arm the upper extremity. So the short head and the lateral head are the ones that cross the, the uh, only at the elbow. The long head is the only one that goes across the shoulder joint. And then that long head is going to be at the infraglenoid cervical here, the bottom part of the femoral joint. Okay. So that crosses the shoulder joint. The other part, the lateral head is going to be the back part of the humerus, and then the medial head is going to be deep on the, from, the, from the humerus here, going into the lacrimal. So only one part of the triceps crosses the shoulder joint. And then as we get farther down, then you have the brachialis that, uh, now we're talking about shoulder muscles that no longer cross the shoulder joint. Yeah. Uh, muscles that do elbow flexion, which is the brachialis. And this part, don't worry about these muscles right now because we're talking more about the shoulder girdle, but this is just a precursor to when we get into them more. So I'll just go through them real quick. You have the brachialis, then the brachioradialis here, and then there's the anconius, which is a small muscle that also does elbow extension. 